Hello everyone. In this uh, video, I'm going to talk about what GATE is. So sort of introduction to GATE. So GATE is synonymous with ambulation and locomotion. Uh, so those terms are all referring to how we as humans uh, ambulate or how we move forward, how we walk, run, skip, jump. Um, other types of animals also have gait or ambulation or locomotion, but it might look completely different um, if they're a quadruped or if they're swimming, but those are all examples of gait, ambulation, or locomotion. Uh, so we use those terms interchangeably um, in biomechanics and in um, neuromuscular control. We tend to use the word locomotion a lot, uh, but gait, ambulation, locomotion all mean exactly the same thing. Um, so gait is unique to an individual. Uh, it's every person has their own individual, very different type of gait, depending just on length of limbs and how we're built and uh, what type of activities we're accustomed to. So what kind of movement patterns we tend to use. Um, and gait can include walking, running, hopping, skipping. It can include all sorts of things, especially for other types of animals. So gait assessment. Um, so we can get a lot of really valuable information from gait assessment. Uh, so we can get information about like ankle instability or other joints, um, stability in knees and, and so on, um, concussions or severity of concussion, uh, low back pain, muscle weakness, many, many other things. Uh, we can also see um, like acute injuries, chronic conditions, abnormal biomechanics, overuse injuries, um, all sorts of different abnormalities and, and injuries that we can see uh, depending on how someone walks um, correctly or incorrectly. Um, and then also we see a lot of postural characteristics that are carried forward into gait and how somebody moves. So quantitative assessment, uh, we can get precise information about kinematics, kinetics, and muscle activity. Um, so we can use force plates, we can use video analysis, we can use EMG. Um, and so we'll do all of those things in our lab class. It uh, requires equipment and the ability to, the ability to interpret the collected data. Um, so just because you have the ability to collect the data, uh, doesn't mean you necessarily know how to interpret that. So it's important to learn those skills too of what am I actually seeing here? What do these forces mean? What should these angles look like? So we need to be able to interpret it. Qualitative assessment, uh, it's observational, functional evaluation of the way a person walks or runs using gross observation. Um, so we can watch somebody walk or run or jump or skip or whatever it is, and we can um, analyze subjectively the way that they're moving. So maybe we see that left and right isn't equal, or maybe they're rounding their shoulders over, um, or they have a limited arm swing. Uh, so there are many observations that we can make subjectively uh, without having to use any equipment or taking any measurements. All right, so components of gait. Step is the smallest component of ambulation or the smallest component of the gait cycle. Uh, we count a step from the time one heel strikes the ground until the other heel strikes the ground. So one step goes from right heel strike until left heel strike, and then a step from left heel strike until right heel strike. Uh, step length is how far you travel in that one step. So the distance between heel strikes, so between right heel strike to left heel strike. Um, so our right and left step lengths should be equal uh, regardless of speed. So at different speeds, the step length will increase and decrease. So the step length will change, but it should always be about equal between left and right sides, no matter how fast we're traveling. Uh, the step width is the lateral distance between the heels. So how far apart are our feet? Okay, foot angle is the uh, angle of the feet towards the lateral direction. So the forefoot of the feet, they, they tend to angle outward away from the body. Uh, so we have a greater angle at slower speeds. So standing and slow speeds, we have a greater foot angle away from uh, pointed totally forward. So foot angle is a lateral angle away from that. Um, and then that angle diminishes the faster we go. 
So we have a greater angle at slower speeds and then lesser, lesser, lesser angle until it's our feet are pointed forward um, when we're going faster. So if we're measuring foot angle, we would measure it from this being zero and then the angle outward, that's the, the angle of that foot angle. Um, so this is an example where we're measuring an angle not from the x-axis like we usually do. In this case, um, we're measuring just from a neutral position or measuring the, the number of degrees outward. A gait cycle is synonymous with a stride. So we can use either term, a gait cycle or a stride is a functional unit of gait. It includes two steps. So it goes all the way from left heel strike until the next left heel strike. Or we could count it from right heel strike until the next right heel strike. Um, but essentially it's just a whole cycle of um, two steps and all the phases that that includes. Um, and again, that is equivalent to a stride. Stride length is the distance traveled during one stride or one gait cycle. So from left heel strike until left heel strike, how far did you travel? So gait efficiency. Uh, efficient gait requires minimal up and down and side to side motion. So the most efficient gait, uh, the person's center of mass is relatively stable in its place relative to uh, the frame of reference and then it's just moving in a forward direction. Uh, so as we increase the up and down and side to side motion, gait becomes less efficient. Um, average walking gait includes about five centimeters of superior inferior displacement, which increases with velocity. Okay, so an average normal person with an average walking pace, uh, they're gonna have about five centimeters of that up and down uh, motion, and then that is going to increase the faster we go. Cadence is just the steps per minute, and that could be for walking or running. It's the rate of ambulation, uh, so the number of steps per minute. An average adult is usually at about 107 steps per minute, plus or minus 2.7 steps, you know, on average. Uh, so somebody might be a bit slower, someone might be a bit faster, um, and that's okay, and there might be different reasons for that, like pain conditions or deconditioning, um, or that sort of thing, but that's on average. So gait efficiency, the most energy efficient gait occurs when uh, the person selects their most comfortable stride length based on their velocity. So when someone is told the length their stride should be, um, the gait becomes a lot less efficient because now they're contracting muscles and sort of abnormal patterns and they're trying to to restrict and control gait to achieve the correct stride length. And that costs a lot more. When we talk about gait efficiency, we're talking about energy cost of traveling a certain distance. So we when gait efficiency is like, how many calories does it cost to travel a mile? Uh, so that, that's more what people are measuring really when they talk about gait efficiency. So if we tell the person to control their stride length and we either want it shorter or longer than what they most comfortably naturally select, uh, then that will cost them more calories per mile, essentially. So it becomes less efficient. Oops. There we go. Uh, the subject does not intentionally alter stride length. Uh, so again, if the person is trying to purposely uh, have a greater or lesser stride length, it will cost them more. Uh, the subject does not try to reduce vertical displacement. So although I mentioned on the last slide that less vertical displacement is more efficient, that's only true for when we have less vertical displacement naturally. If we try to artificially control our vertical displacement, even if we achieve that, even if we have less vertical displacement, if we're forcing it and not doing that naturally, it will make us less efficient and cost more calories to do that. Uh, the subject selects a comfortable walking speed. Um, so when we just walk or run at whatever speed or pace is comfortable and natural for us, that's our most efficient gait. So we all default to our most efficient speed um, and so when we try to 
go purposely slower or purposely faster than what is just kind of our sweet spot of a comfortable pace that is less efficient for us. So it costs us more calories per mile at that pace. Uh, the speed decreases with age. Uh, so meaning that comfortable naturally selected uh, walking speed, that speed decreases with age and it might be due to decreased muscle strength. Um, and it doesn't have to decrease with age and it could be for other reasons, even if it does. Uh, but that's just in the, the total population on average, we have a slower comfortable walking speed. Um, and we could speculate, we can come up with all kinds of reasons why we think that might be, but maybe because of decreased muscle mass. All right, that is all I have for this lecture. I'll stop recording and thanks for watching.